I hate that now she knows how to shut me up. Welcome to Grumble Goat. My name is Matt Labodka, and this is a show about all the small things that drive me insane. Let's grumble. Listen, grumbling is life. This is what I do. This is how I interact. I get upset about things. I'm a funny guy. I'm a witty guy, but I like to grumble. I like to be contrary. I like to point out the inconsistencies in life. I like to point out when things don't make sense. I like to harp on the little inconsistencies in society. You know, that's who I am. That's your host, Matt Labodka. But now your co-host, Veronique, knows how to use that against me. Now in our everyday life, in our everyday interactions, when I start grumbling about something, she'll be like, oh, save it for the grumble. Oh, save it for this week's episode. Oh. And she's right. I get excited when she says that. I'm like, oh, that's right. This is a good topic. But then what else do we have to talk about? That's what I do. That's how I make her laugh. And now she's just like, oh, save it for the grumble. And she knows how to put me down. And then it's like, what, then we just stroll in silence? We just smell the flowers? What are you supposed to do if you're not grumbling? That's what drives me. And what, she's tired of my grumble energy? This delightful grumble energy that you've all come to love and expect from me? This is who I am. I have to grumble. Every once in a while I say fun things. Half the time it's probably lighthearted, but sometimes I get a little into it. Sometimes I get a little grumble heavy. Sure, but that doesn't mean I can only grumble with you guys once a week. I have to grumble more often than it's grumble time. Unless you guys want to hear an endless stream of grumbles. Wait, is that how she feels? That I'm an endless stream of grumbles? Alright, maybe I should try to say something positive every once in a while. Like, what? Nice weather we're having? Except the weather's getting murky, you know? It's wet and cold, and my sinuses don't react well. Somehow, our perfectly evolved skulls didn't take weather changes into account. Like, oh, there's wet mulch in the air. I better clog every orifice. Or, oh, wait. Save it for the grumble. Yeah. I hate that she's got me pegged on the grumble, and that's the grumble. Grumble, 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 grumble. What? Grumble, 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 grumble. What's got your goat? For the latter half of the show, we'll bring in my better half, Veronique, for an unpretentious look and a segment we call... What's got your goat? How you doing today? I feel like there's a staleness in the air. A staleness in the air. Because I think everyone is concerned about the election. Yeah. There's bated breath. Yes. Bated breath. I I love seeing everyone vote early, put in their their ballots. In yeah. The this boxes. is the first year for New York voting early and people are waiting in long lines yeah, to two vote hour early. Lines. Yeah. yeah. Which is great. Democracy in action. Vote. Yeah. So our voting plan is to vote day of. Yes. No, we're absolutely going to vote the day of. And because everyone is early voting, I think our line will be not as long. Do you think when we're standing in line, mm -hmm. do you think that I'm going to be complaining about standing in line? No. No? No, I think you're going to be prepared. I'll probably, I'll probably bring my book. Oh, okay. I might just read Reddit the whole time we're in line. Should I bring a book? No, I, I don't think we'll wait longer than we'll have conversation with each other. Mm, okay, so you're saying I should bring a book. Are you saying you don't like my conversation? I'm just saying that we see each other all the time. Right. So sometimes waiting in line isn't pleasant for both of us at the same time. Oh, that's a very diplomatic way of saying that. Okay, so you think sometimes sometimes I will get miffed about the line and sometimes you will get miffed about the line and we'll have overlapping yes. emotions. Yes, because I usually notice everything. Mm -hmm. So I start talking. You do. You like to notice things and then say, as the thoughts enter your brain, you yes. like to say it out loud. Yes. yes. Regardless yes. of whether it fit in with the last sentence you said. Yes. Or makes sense at all. <laughs> right. And now you, you have a little ticking time bomb. I do. So you're fine in the beginning usually. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you get upset after a while. Yeah. I usually say notice something around that's grumble worthy. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't come in guns a blazing. No, because I... I consider myself a witty guy. You are. So like I always, I always, when I have things to complain about it, I say it in a well thought out fashion. Yes. That's witty. Yes. But also persuasive. And loud enough for other people to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Has there ever been a time that you've like stopped me from grumbling? Yes. And this is what I do. Grumble, 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 <laughs> grumble, grumble. You will do that. Yeah. Yeah. There's and another phrase that you'll do. Oh, I'll say save it for the grumble. 
You will. Yeah. You'll say, save it for the grumble. Yeah, because you'll start, and then I'll think to myself, well, this sounds like a grumble. Oh, I'm not supposed to know what those are. So I say, save it for the grumble. Oh, it's because you're not supposed to know what they are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, it, has it ever been like, I don't want to listen to this right now. I'm just going to tell them to save it for the grumble so I don't have to hear it. I've definitely done that. Oh, okay. Yes. Twice. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> you keep count. <laughs> That's delightful. Yeah. What about you? You grumble sometimes. Oh, I do grumble sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting because when I grumble, I it's been on my mind for a while. Yeah. You let that stew. I do let that it stew. That really has time to marinate. Yeah. And then I'll just come home and and just start talking mm -hmm. to you. And yeah. you're like, what are you talking about? And I'll just keep going. I won't actually fill you in on what's happening. Yeah, you're just you just as the thoughts enter, you yes. they're just coming out. And yeah. so I have to later ask you to fill in some of the details that you left out. Yeah, you by asking questions. Just yeah, just earlier today we were on a yeah. walk and I had to ask you questions about the conversation that you had with me last night. Oh, I know. Yeah. When we were on our pillow talk, I had to fill you in. I feel like I should record it sometimes. We could set up the mics over there. And we'd have a pillow talk grumble. Mm, yeah. I think I think what you're describing is something different than what our listeners are picturing. Oh. When you say pillow talk grumble. Oh, ew. Yeah. No. <laughs> Naughty. Would you describe me as a negative person? No, you're not negative. You're pretty level-headed. Level-headed? Yeah. I, I thought maybe you'd say joyous, funny. Oh. No, you're level-headed. I mean, you're practical, uh, well-mannered. Ooh. You're very funny. Oh, th uh, there it is. But you have a really great ability to kind of pinpoint the nerve in something. What do you mean? Like, you usually just kind of listen to everything that I'm saying and then have like two sentences that blow my mind about yeah. what I just said. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I guess that's insightful. Is that is that a better word? I think that's a good word because usually what I do is I'll take in what you say mm -hmm. and then try and picture the other person's perspective. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And that can solve 90% of problems if people realize that the other person doesn't realize they're being a jerk. Right. Yes. No, you're very good at kind of stating that the simplest answer is probably what happened. Yeah. Occam's razor. Yes. Yeah. I don't sure. know. Uh, what is that? Well, you just said it. The simplest answer is the answer. Yeah, that's Occam's Razor. How did it get that name? Wow, you just called me out. I'm assuming there was a philosopher named Occam. Oh. I, I mean, it's it's a little more specific than we're saying right now. Okay. Occam's? Occam's Razor. Razor. Like you can usually get rid of 90% of the possible options just by looking at the simplest solution. Hmm, so you can shave it off. Right, like With cutting razor. it down. Yeah, you yeah. know, I'm just off the top of my head. Like, if your pants are wet, okay, you could say like, you peed yourself. Oh well, maybe the aliens came down and took my pants, and were doing experiments, and they ended up wet, and they and I was about to wake up, and they had to put my pants back on. You probably peed yourself. You probably peed That's yourself. That's the simplest answer. You probably. That's what I yourself. said. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. Occam's razor in action. Okay. Or if somebody, if a, a coworker shows up late mm -hmm. and they have all these explanations of why the babysitter couldn't show up on time and then they got a flat tire and then a tow truck came and took their car while they were sitting in traffic and they had to go to the police station and all that stuff. The simpler explanation. They were late or they were unprepared. Yeah, they just didn't care to leave on time. Yes. Well, now, see, I often do that to myself, that I don't give myself enough time. You don't give yourself enough time. And then I'm like running to the train, uh -huh. catch it on time. Is in a while, and you know what happens when you're sitting on the train? You're sitting there thinking of excuses. You are. That's yeah. what you do. You sit yeah. there and you're like, I inexplicably had to run back into the apartment to feed the cat because I forgot to feed the cat. And that's why. And so I'm running a few minutes late. No, it's the train. Yeah, you can. Well, in New York City, you can always just blame the train. Yeah. And but the thing is, is that when I do give myself enough time, sometimes then I have to wait for the train for like 10 minutes. And then that is my actual excuse of why I was late. But because I've been late so many times, they don't believe me. Right. And I'm like, no, that's what it was. So yeah, I feel because like you do, you the do. boy who cries wolf. And I'm like, no, but it's true. Yeah. Except you do like, you know, it's the train. The train, the train always goes the wrong direction. It goes. The, I, yeah, I missed my stop. But the thing is, is I feel like I've learned that if people have an extravagant excuse, 
I believe them. In my experience, the people that have a very elaborate excuse mm -hmm. are also the people that have an elaborate excuse for why they didn't get their work done or why they didn't do the thing you told them to do. Well, right. They have excuses. Whereas if somebody just comes in and says, I'm sorry, I missed my train. Then you're like, that's legitimate. Right. There's no holes in that story at all. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I'm a little sensitive to this because... I ordered my Thai food on the train mm -hmm. before I was going into work. And now because in Chelsea Market, all the restaurants have their built like outside, like you can get to the windows outside, mm -hmm. but I had never picked up the Thai food from outside. Mm -hmm. I had to walk all the way around to the other side. Okay. But oh, do you hear so what you're weird. doing? Well, so here, you going to I'm pick saying, up your own food and being late for that is not a legitimate excuse. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. You were trying to sneak in I getting was. a meal before getting to work. I know. You were cheating. Like I, I tried to cheat and I lost. Like you, you yeah. were unprepared. No, I had to five minutes this. and I. I had five minutes to pick up the food. You actually, and it okay. Took me Most like people 10. consider 15 minutes early to be on time ish. <laughs> like, if I'm not 10 to 15 minutes early for something, I'm freaking out that I'm late. I know. And you're like, I had five minutes to spare. I wasn't supposed to be clocked in for a whole nother four and a half minutes. I had all day. It's bad. It's bad. What do you think is the most famous grumble of mankind? I don't get this. What? What are we talking about? This is the meta episode. Okay, I still don't understand. If you haven't pinpointed it by now, <laughs> you're not going to get it because it's a meta okay. grumble. Meta, like metamorphosis? No, meta means like outside the box. Oh. Meta means like, like when you flip something over on itself. Okay. Oh, right. Like memento. Yeah. Yeah, memento was definitely meta. I still don't understand. It's meta in that we're just talking about ourselves this episode. Oh, this is the episode we talk about ourselves. Yeah. Oh, I talk about myself every episode. <laughs> That's why I was so confused. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is our meta episode where we just psychoanalyze ourselves. This is our egocentric episode. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now I understand. Do you have anything you have to get off your chest? Mm, I remember when I was a kid, I would play back scenarios in my head. Sure. And then I would talk to myself in the mirror. Yeah. And did you ever do that as a kid? Did you ever like fantasize a scenario that you were talking to the bully? When I was in grade school, my nickname for one whole year was according to the law. Oh my gosh. Of course you quoted the law. I quoted the law wow. of physics. I mean, that no. doesn't surprise me. I'm not, I'm definitely not surprised by this. No, because eighth grade science, Amazing. right? The teacher was teaching us that elements have three different phases. You know, elements can be gaseous, liquid, or solid. Sure. And she said every state gets denser and denser. So a gas is always less dense than a liquid is always less dense than a solid, sure. which makes sense. Right. And then she said, ice floats oh and i said but according to the law oh water should get more dense when it becomes a solid well it does because it's ice it floats therefore ice is less dense sure i know what you're saying okay then water huh and do we have a solution do we know for some i mean water is not an element first of all but it also expands as it freezes which is Highly unusual, so it happens to float. Wait, water's not an element. Water's not an element. It's a liquid. <laughs> well, I don't understand. An element is... Wait, the periodic table of elements are all oh, the elements. Oh, those... What? No, water's on there. H2O. H is on there, and oh. O is on there. <laughs> That's right. To make water, it takes hydrogen and oxygen. Right, those are two elements... Smash them together. I got a C in chemistry. <laughs> I almost got a D until I cried at the teacher. And then he was like, okay, I'll give you some extra help after school. And that's wild. So you made water in your eyes in front of him. And he was like, okay, that's worth a grade point. That's it. Well, I'm emotionally intelligent. And that's what I'm trying to say. Sometimes you grumble on this show. I do. Does that come naturally to you? No. No? Because I remember feelings. I may not remember the details in something. Okay. I'm an emotionally intelligent person. Well, yes, you are very attuned to the emotions. Yes. Of things and people. And my feelings. So when you remember the things I complain about, do you remember like a greasy, ugly feeling? You know, it's like, it's like in your heart mm -hmm. and then it goes into your tummy a little. Huh. 
You know, like a little seed that like falls and you're like, oh. A heart seed. A heart seed. Is that because it feels like I'm speaking from my gut? Well, yes. You're very upset. No, but if you're speaking from your gut, I feel like it goes the opposite way. I feel these things deep yeah. inside. But I feel like if you're speaking from your gut, it's going up into your heart. Yeah. Opposed to into your... So when you're receiving the information, it goes to your heart and goes to your gut. That's right, babe. I'm trying to throw a drop of my heart at you and it's sinking into your belly. It is. And giving me gastrointestinal IBS. You said that was the beans. Well, I love beans. This has been an episode of Grumble Goat. Thanks for listening. I'm Matt Labodka. I'm Veronique Hurley. Please subscribe. I hate when people say please subscribe. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Oh, this is the episode we talk about ourselves. <laughs>